Hi, my name is Billy from Sweetie Darling and today I'm going to show you how to make watercolour sugar roses. So I start off using flower paste. I use Squire's Kitchen flower paste, it's just the brand I've always used. I have used it pretty much since I started, probably about eight years ago, so I've just continued with it. It's very good quality and I'm sort of, it's my loyal friend. I'm loyal to it, it's loyal to me and it works well. So Squire's Kitchen is what I'm using. You want your paste really, really thin, as thin as you can get it, like paper thin ideally. Um, if you think it's thin enough, just give it another roll, make sure it is thin enough. I use cornflour to stop it from sticking as well. Then you want a rose petal cutter, so something like this, a balloon shaped cutter. Uh, mine is about three and a half centimetres wide, but it would depend on how big your rose is, how, how big you want to do your rose, how uh, the width of your petals, the size of your petals. I only use this one cutter for my roses. I don't go, I don't do a certain number of layers in it and then get bigger, I just use one cutter and do the whole rose with that one cutter. So for the first layer, you just want to cut out one petal and then you're going to soften this on a foam pad. Foam pad, ball tool. Large end of your ball tool, you're going to hold it like a pen and then just press on the very edge of the petal. So you want half your ball tool on the edge of the petal, half of it on the foam and you're doing a stroke round from top to bottom. Now the top of your petal is the rounded bit, so I stroke down one side of the rounded bit and down to the point and then come to the other side of the rounded bit and down to the point. Don't hold on to your petal when you're doing that. If you do, you're gonna, if you hold on to the petal and try and stroke round, it's just gonna tear because the petal is gonna want to move. Let it move with your ball tool. If you do that, then it's just gonna frill nicely and you're not gonna get any tearing. Also, if you have one of these foam pads, watch out for the pesky holes there to trick you. They're not there to trick you, they're really helpful with certain flowers, but for rose petals, not so much. So just watch out, if you stroke over that, it's gonna tear the petal through the hole, so try and keep it in one of the non-holy spaces. When you've softened it, you want to paint your petal with some water. Now I've used polystyrene balls in the middle of my roses just so they're lighter. Um, you can use a ball of icing or a cone of icing. There's loads and loads of different methods of doing roses. I just prefer this one. The polystyrene balls keep the rose nice and light and the paste sticks to it nicely with water anyway. So paint the rose petal with water and then you want to concentrate just on the very top of the petal. You want it to look as if it's unfurling from the center. So you just fold that very top section in and try and curve it round. Don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but you want to try and sort of tuck it in, just concentrate on one side of it. And then once that bit is tucked in nicely, bring the other side round. And don't squish it all, don't close it off completely or fold it. You want it to look, as I say, like a sort of swirling out from the center. When you've done that, you can then cut out your second layer of petals. So you want three petals for this layer. Soften them in exactly the same way as before. Paint a bit of water on them. The first petal I painted water all over. This one I'm only going to go about two thirds of the way up the petal. And now you want to stick them on to the one, your, your, your first petal that's already stuck around your polystyrene ball. So stick it over the join of the last one and keep the petals at the same height. If you get higher and higher and higher as you're going and you're making this rose, it's just going to look odd like an inverted triangle. If you get lower and lower, it's going to look like a really beautiful cabbage. And it will be a really beautiful cabbage, but a cabbage isn't what you want, especially not, well, I guess for some things. But anyway, if you're clicked on a sugar rose video, you're not going to want a cabbage at the end of it. So keep those petals at the same height the whole way around. So these three, you will see on a lot of other tutorials that you want to try and hold one side of the petal open and tuck it in. When I've taught before, that is the bit that people struggle with the most and it is something that if you practice you'll get the technique but I thought well I wonder what it looks like if you don't tuck the petals and if you just overlap them the other way around and it looks exactly the same no one is ever going to know unless you're entering a competition you're entering a competition you get it exactly like a rose if this is going on a cake no one is going to stand there and say mm, the petals not tucked in the right way no one's going to know so this works exactly the same and it's so much easier than trying to fiddle and and hold the petal and try and tuck one in and then tuck one in another angle. Just stick it on, stick it down both sides and then overlap your next petal on top of that. So stick the petal down, stick both sides of it down and then the other two petals you're going to overlap. So just stick one about half over the first petal and stick that all the way around. And then your third one, stick it so it's going sort of halfway between two of the other petals. I hope what I'm saying is making sense because you're watching the video, because if I was just explaining this, it would be awful, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I'm not very good with my words. So once you've got all three of those on, you can stick them as tightly or as loosely as you want, depending on how big and open you want your balloon to be, or if you want it to be sort of like a tighter bud. 
the tighter you wrap them around, the more of a bud it's going to be, obviously, as with the rose. Um, so you leave that one to firm up on some foam whilst we cut out the next layer. Now the next layer is five petals, softened in exactly the same way. Now I've got two examples here. One where you just soften the petals and stick them on as we've done before, and one where you soften the petals and then sort of fold the edges of the petal back as if it's unfurling a bit more. So I'll show you both. Now the one with the normal petals, it still looks really pretty. Again, it just depends on how big you want it, or how open you want your final rose to be. So this is the first one, normal petals, and it does still look very pretty. Now the second one, I'm gonna cut the petals out, soften them as before, and then I refer to a petal as, as if it's a body. So this would be the head, these would be the shoulders, and then down here would be the legs. Pay no attention to that. It's the shoulders, I'm thinking of. So you fold those shoulders back, and it just needs to, just, just roll them back into it and then you can paint those with water and then stick those on as before and you'll see this one is just a little bit more open looking than the last one. Now I do tend to do this on this layer, fold, fold those shoulders back, but both will look pretty similar at the end. The, the next layer and the layer after that we always fold the shoulders back anyway, so it doesn't really matter which one you do here, it's just to show you the difference. If you built up the whole rose without folding it back, it ends up looking sort of a bit rigid, I suppose, less relaxed and open. Whereas if you fold all the shoulders back, it is more of an open bloom. Now, the next layer we're actually going to stick on is seven petals. So we've done one, three, five, then it will be seven, and then it will be ten as the last layer. But that last layer, I want them to firm up a bit before I stick them on. So we're going to jump from the seven, well, from the five, we're going to skip the seven for now and cut out ten. So cut out ten petals soften them, fold all the shoulders back and then leave them to firm up on some foam. Now I've got some dimpled foam which does work quite well, some people use spoons or egg boxes, a normal flat piece of foam would be fine if you don't have it. The flower paste is quite soft so it will sort of prop itself up on, it, on its elbows I suppose if we're referring to it as a body and its shoulders are folded back it will prop itself up. But if you have the dimpled foam great, it just helps with the shape a little bit. If you don't it's not, not a big deal at all. My dimpled foam was from Purple Cupcakes, um, I got it at a cake show. Now you want to leave those 10 petals to firm up and then we're going to come back to our 7 petals. So roll out some paste, cut out 7 more rose petals, soften them, again fold the shoulders back and then you can stick these ones on around your rose that has already got your layer of 1, 3 and 5. So a little bit of water, about 2 thirds of the way up each petal of the seven petals and then stick those on the same way as we did before. Now your rose should be looking quite a bit more open so we're just going to stick one down and then keep overlapping them on top of each other on the way around until you've fitted all seven round. Once you've done that you can then come back, back to your ten petals because they should have firmed up a little bit, they should still be a bit flexible, you don't want them completely dry. If they have for instance dried overnight or for an hour or so they're going to be difficult to get on. You want them sort of touch dry I suppose so they're still flexible but they haven't dried completely, they've firmed up, but they haven't dried so much that you can't then shape them around the rose. So with these ones, again, put a little bit of water on them, and this time, instead of overlapping them, you're gonna stick them opposite each other. So I say north, east, south, west. So you're gonna go one, and then one opposite, and then two to fill in the sort of side spaces. And from there, you're just going to look at your rose from the top and work out where, where you need petals. You might not need all ten, you might get to eight or nine and think, hmm, that looks okay there. Don't worry about putting the extra one in if you, if you don't need it. You might need eleven petals, you might have to annoyingly cut out another one to fill in a gap. But it's just, just play with it, there isn't a set rule with this. So just keep looking at your rose and then fill in the gaps wherever you need them. And at the end, this last layer makes it look a really gorgeous open rose and it does make a big, big difference. So when you've got your big open bloom finished and it's all left in, in white, just leave that to firm up a bit. We're going to add the watercolour painting, but we do want it to be a little bit set. Now that should only take 45 minutes to an hour. It doesn't take very long at all. Depending on your climate, it might even be less. It, obviously it might be a little bit more as well if it's very humid where you are, but flower paste doesn't take long to dry. So when you have got it nice and set and you can handle it without it being sticky and sort of the, the petals flopping, you can use um, paste colour and vodka. I've spoken about this vodka before. It's a very strong vodka, and I say it is for painting, not partying. 
So this one, you want to mix a little bit of paste colour, I've used Sugar Flare Baby Pink and quite a bit of the vodka, depending on the depth of colour that you want. I'm going to show you two different depths of colours here, um, a very, very pale one that doesn't look like it's going to be much at all, but actually gives a really subtle, natural pink flourish. Um, and then I'll do a slightly darker one as well. And obviously you can do these any colours you want. So you want to mix your paste colour, mix your vodka together so there's no bits of colour in it and you're just going to paint it directly onto the petals and it will just flood. It's, it just Because it's so runny it will just flood but it's not going to flood in a blotchy way unless you have a very dark colour which you shouldn't really. When it's watercolours they should be quite pretty pastel colours and, and as I say very natural looking. So they'll just run and, and fill in, sort of go into the crevices, so it almost creates natural shading for you as well. So instead of getting messy with dust everywhere, this is a really lovely way of doing it, especially if you mix a couple of colours together. Maybe if you had a yellow in the middle coming up to an orange and then a pink, that would be really gorgeous. It would almost glow from the middle, or pinks and purples together, or pastel pinks and lilacs even. It's, the, the, the options are endless. <laughs> uh, you can do the back of the rose if you want to, it depends on the design of your cake, if you're going to see the back of the rose and it's Definitely, definitely worth doing. If you're not, then it's, it's personal preference how much time you have, I suppose. Um, and then the second one I've done, I've done it just a little bit darker, so that is really just the case of using a tiny bit more paste colour, mixing it through. If you're not sure how this is going to come out, I always test mine on the side of a paint palette, and it will always look paler on the paint palette than it does on your icing. For some reason, it's, it's almost like the icing soaks up the colour. So just be a little bit cautious of that. Have a test piece, a test piece of fondant or um, flower paste, maybe a spare petal, and just paint some on there before you go ahead and go on straight onto your rose with it. So the second one is just a little bit darker, and you can see it's not very much colour at all, and it has made quite a big difference. I've got them both here, and they look so pretty, don't they? They, they look almost more fragile and more delicate than if you had done a block solid colour. That's how to make a watercolour sugar rose. If you enjoyed that, there will be new videos every Monday, so please click the subscribe button below. And also, if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, comment them below, because I'd love to hear them. Thank you very, very much for watching. Bye.